years living in Vietnam and five years in Hội An, three artworks published with sketches and paintings about Hội An, Sapa and Ho Chi Minh City, seven solo exhibitions in Vietnam, our guest is the storyteller using colors to paint her pictures of Vietnam, the country she loves and chooses to live in. So who is she? Let's follow me to find out. A British artist is smitten with Vietnam. From remote mountainous areas to bustling cities, the ancient and peaceful lands in Vietnam have countless surprises, wonderful memories and emotions. All these things have been depicted and interpreted by artist Bridget March over the past 10 years. Such has been her love affair with Vietnam that Bridget enjoys life and paints. The galleries she opened have helped put many central Vietnam artists and their artwork on the international stage. Hello Bridget and what a wonderful place you have here in Hoi An. Thank you so much for inviting us here. Thank you very much, Lena. It's lovely to have you here. Yes. So before moving here to Hoi An, you uh, used to live in uh, Ho Chi Minh City. Yeah. And also uh, Sapa <coughs> as well, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I want to hear a little bit about your experience uh, there and your experience now here in Hoi An. Okay. Um, I came to Vietnam to become the artist I always wanted to be. I was uh, a lecturer at an art college, but I didn't have enough time to paint. Uh, and I had the opportunity to come here and focus on the art and go on the journey that an artist embarks upon. Um, and I started in Ho Chi Minh City, which is incredibly exciting and very stimulating. Um, but why Vietnam in the first place? Oh. Because I have, a, I have a family, a young family friend in Saigon, and I came to visit her. And she said, why don't you come to Vietnam and do your art? And I was like, oh, oh, I could do that. Yeah, why not? Yeah. yeah? So uh, uh, I quit my job and I came here. Yeah. So was it very hard for you to make that decision at that no. time? I made it in 48 hours. 48 hours? Yes. She, made, she gave me the idea. I flew home to uh, the UK the next day. And on the flight, I thought, I can do this. Nothing to stop me. Yeah. So when you first came to Vietnam, which city did you uh, choose to live in? I went to live with her for a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was in Saigon. And, um, and when you came, did you instantly fell in love with the city or it took you a while to adapt? And oh, no, I fell in love with Vietnam on my first visit. And uh, the thing that inspired me the most was a visit to the Fine Art Museum in Hanoi. Yeah. Because you see the history of this country in pictures, you know. You don't have to understand Vietnamese. You can go to the art gallery and it'll tell you all about right. everything. Yeah. yeah, and I loved it. And so they have all the works dated back in... Uh, yeah, in 1,500 years. 1,500 years. Yeah. 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 yeah, and it's laid out chronologically, mm -hmm. so uh, you can just follow the story, you know? It's, right. it's really great. Yeah. Yeah. Sensational Saigon is a 110-strong collection of paintings by Bridget, capturing her unexpected discoveries about one of Vietnam's most vibrant cities. The tour de force was a three-and-a-half-year-long journey detailing Bridget's interesting perspective. In her collection, Bridget illustrates the streets and the city's dwellers through the stories she heard during her research. The details, such as the phoenix image at the Ho Chi Minh City Museum of Fine Arts, are carefully observed and described, as are the street corners that feature in many old stories and folk legends. All show the sophistication and love for Ho Chi Minh City that lives in Bridget March, the artist. 
So tell me about the drawing experience in Sapa. Is it very different from the experience in Saigon, in Ho Chi Minh City? Well, absolutely, necessarily, yeah. In Saigon, the artist is interested in the architecture, the streets, and what people are doing. In Sapa, you are looking at the huge things. I had never lived in mountains before, so spending four months in the mountains was amazing for me. And so you have the huge things, and then you have the very small things, the embroidery and the batik and the symbolism and the detail which tells the story of the people. I, I learned something new about being a human being from the, uh, the tribes women of the mountains. You know, they have nothing and they are so human, you know? Um, they don't have any pretensions. Um, they have their very strong identity, which they wear. And their kindness is endless. It's infinite. Give me an example. Well, they, you know, even though they have nothing, um, and maybe they cannot speak your language, they will invite you into the home and show you off, you know? Look, look at this European I found, you know? Come in, eat with us. Here are my children, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here's my uh, father, my mother, and, and then the village starts to come, you know? And they, they share and everybody is, I don't know, maybe entertained by this foreigner, but also so kind, so warm, um, just human, you know? They don't, be, they don't pretend to be anything other than what they are, and that's very comfortable. The first artwork that Bridget March painted about Vietnam was Summer in Sapa. Bridget's art books showcase her works and explain her stories, emotions, and knowledge about local history, culture, and people. Bridget March spent at least four months in Sapa to capture spectacular rides, terraces, vibrant markets, and impressive Sapa ethnic costumes. The artist shared that the more she learns about Vietnam, the more she appreciates the authentic identity of the Vietnamese people. You know, what I like about you is also you draw, but then you do a very thorough research about the object that yes. you draw, like yeah. the cultural element, the history element yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. So um, tell me more about that. For example, the embroidery that you mentioned. Yes. Their dress, their jacket, uh, the badge on the back, it's their signature, it's their fingerprint. Um, and I discovered the symbolism in the batik, the snails, the crab claws, the hen's eyes, the cock's combs, uh, the mountains, the fences, the houses. All of these have symbols which are in the, uh, in the patterns and it's fascinating, absolutely fascinating, you know. And the, the red zhao women, uh, they describe their landscape in their embroidery whether they are uh, below the forest or above the forest, whether they, are, uh, they have rice fields or they have the river, uh, and that's in the way that they arrange the symbols that they work with. Trees, again, trees, mountain stripes for the rice terraces. Um, uh, and flowers, and uh, they don't have animals in theirs, um, the, like the Hmong do. Uh, but they can recognize village to village uh, exactly where somebody is from and what their landscape is. It's like wearing your geography. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's fantastic. So interesting.
that I learned something about humanity up there. It's not enough to be the foreigner in a foreign land. Uh, to understand uh, the culture or something about the culture, you have to change. You have to uh, let some Vietnam under your skin, you know? And um, you can't do that without, you know, losing some of your Western attitudes. Mm -hmm. You just can't. Okay. You have to kind of melt in a little bit. Right. Yeah. So what a Western attitude that uh, you compromise to, uh, to uh, um, understand the culture, local culture more? I think the, the biggest difference between um, the, the Vietnamese culture and the Western culture is your approach to birth and death. Yeah? Uh, how, how you uh, welcome children into the world and how you uh, mark the death of your loved ones and how you celebrate, continue to celebrate their lives uh, by marking anniversaries is so healthy, so open, you know? In the Western culture, death is kind of hidden, mm. yeah? And when somebody is gone, there's, um, there's a lot of kind of privacy about it. You know, uh, but here the the dead are as much a part of your daily life as the living, mm -hmm. and uh, I like that. Yeah, back home, uh, one of my uh, one of my son-in-laws he uh, he died very suddenly, mm -hmm. and I could understand how difficult it was for his wife to cope with that. And I tried to tell her week by week, if you were in Vietnam, you would be doing this. Mm -hmm. And on the 49th day, and on the 100th day, and you know, yeah. I'm sure she thought I was crazy. Yeah. Uh, and then after a while, she, she preferred not to talk about it. It hurt, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Here, because uh, death is so public, mm -hmm. and in Hoi An, the funerals are on the street, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, everybody knows, everybody's part of the grieving and the celebration. You know, I think everybody's much calmer about... about death. Yeah. About yeah, yeah. And I really like it. I think it's... Mm -hmm. I like your ways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Bridget and her friends have visited many places in Hoi An to learn and explore the timeless beauty of this ancient town. The more they explore, the more they love and become attached to the scenery. I know that you go out a lot for sketching. Um, tell me about um, a day, a typical day of you going out. Well, uh, when I came to Hoi An, you know, nothing much happens in Hoi An, really. Fishing, farming, and family life, yeah. And so for Westerners who come and live here, uh, we have to make a lot of our own entertainment. So I started two things. Uh, the first was uh, movie nights, where I show Vietnamese movies, yeah, to try and uh, help everybody to understand the Vietnamese culture, sense of humor, uh, romance, you know. What movies did you show? Oh gosh, so many. We show, uh, we show one, uh, I, I, uh, initially I showed a movie every week and we went through some of the most famous old movies like The Scent of Green Papaya, oh, Vertical that. Ray of Sun, yeah. Yeah. you know, those, yeah. Um, one of my favorites is Cyclo. And uh, now, after five years, we just see them uh, once a month. So you show the movie to who are your uh, audience? It's aimed at expats. It's aimed at people who are from another country living here. And um, I love movies. And before I came to Vietnam, I watched a lot of Vietnamese movies. You know, it helped me to understand where I was coming to. So I'm just sharing it. The second thing was I started an art group. And the main function of the art group is that we go out sketching together. So some people are a little bit shy about walking into a temple with a sketchbook or uh, in a quiet little alley or something. Uh, they don't know if they should be there or not. I don't care, you know, because I, I just, I feel welcome everywhere I go. So they follow along with me, and I take them unusual places. We go everywhere, the beach, the hills, the rice fields. Um, and sometimes, if the weather isn't good, we'll go to a cafe with a nice view. Now I want to ask you about uh, the inspiration. Uh, where do you get your inspiration from? One of the world's most famous artists, Pablo Picasso, said very wisely, inspiration will find you working. So when you are working, it's when your brain and your eye are talking to your hand that inspiration happens. When people say to me, what inspires me in Vietnam? Uh, the inspiration comes when I'm working, uh, but what makes it possible is good weather, really good light every day, which I don't get a home in England. In the winter, the, the light is awful and it's very short. Um, the, uh, the kindness of the people, uh, the river, the beach, the mountains, it's all beautiful, it's all wonderful. So just stop, sit, get your pencil out and work and inspiration will come. And then all of these, uh, I have sketchbooks, so many sketchbooks. And when I need, when I'm thinking about a painting, I go to the sketchbooks and think about where I had a special experience. And I think, okay, shall I turn that into a painting now? Yeah. Bridget March came to Hoi An for the first time in 2012, and the city immediately left a deep impression on her. Life in a small city, recognized by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site, has become a daily source of inspiration for her. She diligently recorded this by drawing watercolor sketches and publishing an art book a week in Hoi An. The solemn pagodas, the unique old houses, bold oriental architecture, the quiet and peaceful pagoda bridge, the model yellow walls tinged with thyme, the rice fields near the city. The Huai River, once the epicenter of the town's port. Colorful temples, 
shops, and bustling markets are all vividly captured by Bridget in her paintings. Have you ever faced creative block? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So during COVID, I think every artist was shocked. And I wasn't able to do anything for about three months. I just felt lost. And everything seemed so meaningless. Uh, so I listened to Picasso. Inspiration will find you working. So I just started uh, doing what we call automatic drawing. So that's just do something, girl, just do something, right. you know? Get the paint out, get a piece of paper, get a canvas, and just do something. Don't think about it, just do it, mm -hmm. yeah? yeah? And in doing that, you're moving your eye and your hand are speaking to each other, and uh, something will come out. Mm -hmm. And what happened to me was that uh, I could see some of the wildlife coming back mm. into Hoi An. Right. I was sitting, uh, uh, having a cold drink in town one day by the river, and I saw flying fish come up the river. Yeah. I had never seen that before. Mm. And of course they had been, the, bus the river is normally so busy mm. that the fish, the flying fish don't come. Um, and in this neighborhood, the birds, there were more birds, and you could hear them, mm. yeah? Yeah. And the skies were empty, the birds were singing, uh, there were more birds, um, and I thought, that's it. I need to talk about Vietnam's wildlife. So I started to do uh, paintings about the endangered species of uh, Vietnam mm -hmm. yeah. and some of the extinct ones as well. Right, yeah. so that happened during COVID time. Yes, yeah. 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 And you also said that um, you found a new you, right, after COVID. I did. Tell yes. me more about that. Okay. You know, when children draw, they just do it, right. yeah? And it's just what they do. They do it un without any self-conscious feelings, they're not embarrassed, they just do it. And then sometime between the age of 12 and 13, they get a bit shy, they get competitive, they start to learn about art and they start to think, oh, my work isn't as good as that person, or, oh, it seems that people like this kind of work, maybe I should go that way, and, oh, you know, they start to look at the way other people do things and they lose their way and lose their courage, mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah. And it's a very unusual child that doesn't lose their courage and makes it through those teenage years mm -hmm. still with that uh, courage of a child, yeah. yeah? And that happened to me. I went uh, to art college and uh, went to university, and somewhere along the way, I lost my identity mm -hmm. as an artist. Um, and then I became uh, a designer in industry, and you have to be like this, and you have to dress like that, and you have to have this car, and blah, blah, blah. And then I ended up as a lecturer in an art college, and I'm watching all these young people express themselves feeling really frustrated. I come to Vietnam and I start to do watercolor because it's very portable. I can take it everywhere with me and I'm so excited to, uh, you know, observe the differences and the, everything is different. The trees, the, the boats, everything. And everybody thinks, oh, she does watercolor. And I hadn't the courage to say, um, yeah, but I'm not sure that's really me, mm. yeah? So in COVID, I was able to stop, think, and when I started just doing it, just doing this automatic painting, I found my way back 
to the artist I had been when I was 17. And I recognized the, the patterns, the colors, the ideas that excited me then. So it was like rediscovering the child again. A painting gallery not too big, but cozy enough. Professional lighting, thoughtful arrangement of the artworks, harmonious colors, and introductions to each artist. That is Bridget March's gallery in Hoi An. Her gallery is a showcase for up-and-coming artists. And for Bridget, each artwork is capable of touching the viewer's emotions. Painter Fan Teng Ming was born in 1976. He graduated from the Ho Chi Minh City University of Fine Arts and now lives in Hoi An. He met Bridget March in 2009 through a friend. With one glance, Bridget immediately saw the uniqueness in his paintings. He's very good at uh, describing uh, what's going on in relationships, what's happening in the home, families and uh, married couple and children and so on. And I love this picture because there's obviously an argument going on here. Yeah? And the wife is like, mm. she's really annoyed about something. Yeah? And he is looking sort of, oh, you know? And they're not talking. Someone has said something wrong. And he's holding on to the dog, kind of, you know, be my friend, please dog, be my friend, because my wife doesn't love me at this moment. And I think he captures it so well. I call this painting again and again and again, because this is what happens with married couples. They annoy each other, they love each other, and they hate each other. Look at her eyes, look, just look at that that sideways look, and his mouth, like he's swallowed a mosquito, you know? <laughs> it's good, it's really good, yeah, yeah. I love it, and great color. Bridget constantly invites Fan Teng Ming to exhibit his paintings in her gallery. She also introduces his works to museums and exhibitions at home and abroad. I think that the artists who are young people who are just starting được mình tiếp cận những cái 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 bà Brit mà học hỏi được cái độ chuyên nghiệp từ cái treo tranh, ánh sáng, cách tổ chức. Không những là nhiều người biết mà những cái người tiếp cận những cái, cái khách hàng mà gọi là khách hàng chuyên nghiệp, khách hàng mà đã có lấy nhiều năm rồi thì đó là cái điều quan trọng. Bà là họa sĩ bởi vậy có cái sự tương tác với mình rất là gần gũi và hiểu nhau về cái công việc. Và cái điều trên hết là bà trân trọng cái tác phẩm nghệ thuật của mình. Bridget March showcases not only Fan Teng Ming's works at her gallery, but also the artworks of many other painters. She finds the uniqueness in them. I, uh, I have this exhibition, Adulization, and she, she came and uh, I think she, she enjoyed the, the process and the pictures. So we, she asked me to, to put some of my work um, at the art space. We have some good return. Some people talk about this, yeah, I think, and are happy. Bridget has always appreciated the artworks of other painters. They may not be famous, but she sees the ability to touch the hearts of gallery visitors inside the works, and she believes that the time will come when these works will be highly sought after. So besides uh, working on your own projects, you are also very supportive to the local artists here yes. uh, and help them to uh, create their own artworks. Um, so tell us more about that. All right. So when I came to Hoi An, obviously I was keen to find fellow artists. Um, the more I got to, to learn about them and what they do, uh, the more I realized that uh, they, 
none of them have a website. Um, some of them are using social media or they're using somebody else's social media. Um, and they would have little exhibitions. They'd get together and have a little exhibition in a cafe or something, but <clears throat> they didn't seem to be really... They didn't understand how to market their work properly. So I, I understood that I could help them. Um, <clears throat> so when I opened the gallery, initially it was all my work, and bit by bit the artists would come in to see who I was and what I was doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And some of them would say hello. Many of them just sort of pulled their caps down and kind of looked around the gallery, would say thank you and leave. And then I would, I'd go out of the shop and say, excuse me, are you an artist? Anyway, bit by bit, I got to know them all, and uh, <clears throat> I could help. The next thing that happened was I started to give art classes, and I needed to choose somewhere really beautiful to do that. And the Anantara Resort in Hoi An has a lovely terrace on the river, really good light. And so I started doing classes there, and I got to know the team there. And uh, I said, you know, there are no galleries and you've got no art. <laughs> <Opportunity>. <laughs> I think there's a gap in the market here. What do you think? Anyway, it's a long story, but we worked together and we created the art space. Um, and the Western visitors to the hotel loved the art. And because they trust a brand of a, the brand of a good resort, then they trust that the art is of a proper quality at a good price, <coughs> authentic and, you know. Um, and so it's been a really good partnership and I've sold a lot of work for artists through there. And then occasionally I'll do a special exhibition for an artist. Right, yeah. By opening a gallery, uh, you are acting uh, as a bridge, connecting the Vietnamese artists with the world. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly what I hope to do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do you think about the potential of the Vietnamese art? Uh, I mean, the contemporary one. Year by year, I see um, Vietnam's artists uh, doing better and better. And now they're beginning to achieve really high prices in um, international auctions. Right. There are about 10 or 15 artists in Vietnam, mainly based in Hanoi, mm. but they are selling their works in auction houses in Hong Kong, uh, Singapore, New York, San Francisco, um, Germany and France, and we now have had the first more than $1 million painting selling of contemporary art. You have some now, some really successful artists. Yeah, interesting. The Vietnamese art is now being recognized internationally and that is fantastic, yeah. really good. Yeah. It's come a long way in a short time. Bridget constantly wishes to dedicate and support the community of which she is now part. As a result, Bridget has auctioned many paintings to raise funds for local charities. For example, in May 2022, Bridget successfully persuaded numerous artists in Hoi An and several domestic and international artists to donate artwork for a charity collection she was curating. The 40 Strong collection was later sold at auction to set up an education fund for ethnic minority girls in central Vietnam. This is the third time she has done such meaningful and charitable work. Oh, I love this event. I am inspired to, um, to see the creativity of, uh, of everybody's different styles. It's incredible that you have one topic.
and all these different interpretations of the one topic. What a joy and to be held in this beautiful venue with all these lovely expats and the money all going to a good charity. It's perfect. I feel very lucky to be here. Bridget hopes this will become an annual activity. Hence, she continues to devote her efforts to community development and spreading love and kindness. What's your future plan? <laughs> well, I'm getting older and what I would like is, uh, I, I would hate, uh, if I ever have to stop doing this, I would hate for this uh, little gallery of mine in central Vietnam um, to die. So uh, what I'm looking for is somebody who would like to come and work with me, pick it up, and let it continue into the future. And what about other projects to uh, support the uh, local artists? And uh, um... Well, uh, at the, look, at the, the, re the resort uh, in town, uh, I've just put in a whole new collection of paintings and introduced three new artists. Uh, two women uh, painters on silk, which is brand new, and they are proving to be very popular. Yeah. And both of them are mothers. So they went to art college, then they got married, they had children, and they, now their children are old enough to give mum a bit more time and so they're now beginning to uh, find their way back into their, um, their artist lives. Yeah. And they're producing some lovely work and it's about their families. Mm -hmm. It's really intimate, it's beautiful, right. yeah. yeah. Very different from the work of the men, mm -hmm. yeah. Can you share with us about other charity projects that uh, you worked with the uh, sure. local ethnic uh, groups? Yeah. yeah. Okay, when I was in Sapa um, and this uh, young Australian guy gave me a room and some food and said paint uh, and I discovered that he was supporting a school, I was inspired by what he was doing. And this was the first time that I realized that I could actually use art to raise money for good causes. Uh, so as I said before, we produced some artwork. I worked with the kids. We produced a range of prints and we made a lot of money for the school. Uh, now that I'm settled here in Hoi An, uh, I regularly do um, a fundraiser. Um, I always do one in October and then I will do others as they emerge. So recently, um, a charity that supports the education of ethnic girls in central Vietnam came to me with a problem. Um, they needed to do a fundraiser because their funds were so depleted through the COVID period. Um, so I put an idea to them about a, an auction. So I contacted everybody in the Hoi An art group and said, right, everybody, please, could you produce an A4 picture? And we decided the event would be themed about tea because uh, one group of girls from the charity have started producing uh, a range of teas grown in central Vietnam and they're trying to market them. So they wanted to do a tea tasting. I thought, well, okay, we'll do some art about tea. Yeah. I don't really, really like that. And uh, in the end, I collected 40 paintings, just little A4 paintings. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them on paper, some on canvas. I framed them and put them on the wall and so on. Um, and we had a silent auction. And that means each painting has a bidding sheet. Mm -hmm. There's a starting price, yeah? Yeah. a minimum price, mm -hmm. and then you've got to start bidding, writing down a bid. And if somebody writes down a higher price, then you go back and you write down a higher price mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah. We had it in a local cafe. Mm -hmm. It was so busy. It was just a phenomenal success. 
and uh, we think we have raised more than 40 million in just three hours. The artists of Hoi An and one artist from Saigon. Uh, oh, and one artist from Sydney as well, Australia, uh, did the work and the good people of Hoi An responded really well and came and gave us their money and took a painting home. Beautiful, yeah, thank you. For Bridget March, she found her true self in painting, and Vietnam somehow is the place where she finds herself painting prolifically and happily. There may be many more things to talk about Bridget, but I know for sure that whenever I look for her, she might be working on canvas on notebook, watercolor or acrylic, painting beautiful pictures of Vietnam, and as she said, inspiration finds me working. So I hope you will find inspiration after learning about her story as well. And that is for this episode of Talk Vietnam. Thank you for watching and see you next time.